welcome to an episode of Sentimental Sensation, um, the podcast where we talk about uh, music and the impact it has on our day-to-day lives. Um, as always, I'm your host, George, and today I have two special guests, uh, my mum, Nikki Hall, and my uncle, Richard Beasley. Welcome, guys. <laughs> uh, you can say hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess we'll start with Rob. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, um, my name's Nikki, and um, this is my first podcast with George. <laughs> and um, we've always been a, a Seekers fan um, since the early 60s. Yeah, I enough? should mention as well. Yeah, that's good. I, I forgot to mention before that our topic today is Seekers, but yes. Uh, Rick as well, yeah, tell Seekers, us a bit yeah. about yourself. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm, hello, I'm Rick, and I'm, I've been the Seekers fan since they started in 1964 when I was nine, and, and uh, I've always Always like the seekers. And cool. uh, looking forward to no, talking I'm about it. George's <laughs> uncle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we kind of gathered yeah. that from the introduction, but thanks for clarifying. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's all good. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I don't know if uh, anyone has anything they want to start off with, but I mean, um, I guess we could start off with like your favourite Seekers song. <laughs> My favourite Seekers song. I think mine is you... probably um, Lemon Tree. The um, oh, ah yeah. yeah, is that the is that the full name of the oh. song? Lemon Hearts. The um, I like yeah. The morning. And the morning, morning town ride. Have you got a favourite song, Rick? Too much, morning too town much ride. From, really. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe give us like your, from, like your your top your top five or something, oh, <laughs> or your top four or three. What or something. do you want? What five? Well, like I'll just well, like, you can just say like some it. of your favourites if you want. <laughs> I'll, I'll never find another you, or oh, yeah. um, the wreck of the the wreck of the old ninety seven. Okay. The, uh, last thing, last thing on my mind. Last thing on my mind. Yeah. The Emerald Emerald City. Um, oh yeah. The um, Gypsy Gypsy Rover. Uh, yeah. Colors of my colors of my of my life. Yeah. <laughs> is the Emerald well, City one? Is that George related to? Like <laughs> I don't know if that is that related to Emerald. I don't know. In... I wasn't sure if it was related oh, to yeah. Wizard of Oz, the Emerald. I was thinking that Emerald, because you said the Emerald Road, right? The Emerald, the Emerald, um, the Emerald City, the Emerald is City it? it's yeah, really I was really connected to. Um, I was thinking of the Devas, yeah, because they have the Emerald City in that, don't they? I don't know if that's that's the song of the soundtrack, or whether they've just kind of used that name or something. Yeah. I mean, I think, Rick, I think, I think uh, if it was connected to oh, yeah. over here, but oh, yeah, prob- oh, maybe, yeah, because they are an Australian band, I suppose, so they could be, but well, I don't think, I don't think they were from, not really, a you're near, emerald, right. aren't you, you're near the place, aren't you, yeah, yeah, but, that emerald, <laughs> or not, I, I don't think the sequels are from Melbourne, were they? Weren't the Seekers from they Sydney? They were from or Melbourne, weren't they? Oh, they were from Melbourne. Oh, were oh, they? Oh, sorry, they were from Melbourne, yeah. Oh, so they, they were from they Melbourne. 
It oh, says they originally yeah. formed in Melbourne. I thought, uh, I, 62. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realise that they um, took a um, job on a cruise ship. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. Well, they came over to they came over to, they the, came UK over to the UK. Well, yeah. Didn't they? Because they had a tour yeah. of. What says here they were the first Australian the pop leaving. music group to achieve oh. major chart success in the UK and the US. They had ten, um, ten top hits apparently. Yeah. Because they had <laughs> the leaving of Liverpool, but it must, it must ah, be yeah. the Liverpool in Australia, not the they, yeah, yeah, probably not the Liverpool <laughs> over here. Always a bit confusing, yeah, when they have <laughs> all the same names that are in Australia over there. I can't read my writing. I think it was like the first ski or the fair ski was the name of the boat that they. Ah, oh, okay. So apparently, the, the end on. on one of those programs, didn't they? They said that that they. There were the three the three men to start with, and then Judith, yeah, and then the Judith Durham, Durham joined, joined them. Later. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. There was sure. just um, was it Paul Garn and and Keith Pocker and Bruce Woodley. There was yeah. only those three to start with, and then and then Judith, Judith Durham met. So didn't she meet them through a friend or something? And then she, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think she, she joined the group. Uh, yeah. And she met Bruce Woodley, didn't she? I think, and, and yeah. then she, yeah. she ended up joining the Seekers, I suppose, because they, oh, okay, yeah. they were always called the Seekers, weren't they? Yeah, but they, and then there's obviously the new Seekers that were formed out of the kind of, um, yes, yeah, the, the yeah. From one of the guys Popka. that did it, yeah. Because Keith Popka, he was the, was he the producer of the New Seekers, wasn't he? Yeah. I think. He was either That's the revised. producer or the man yeah. manager, wasn't he? Yeah, kind of reminds me of the what, Wiggles, how they've manager. got like, <laughs> how they've got like, um, <laughs> um, I think Greg, I think his name is, they've got one of the original members from the Wiggles, he's, still there in the new group who so kind of helps you know helps the new guys how to how to be wiggles i guess <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, i think it's greg or oh, which one might be in here yeah. Um, uh, yeah the very the very the seekers is it there the one the oh, very yeah. best one, one oh, of the, yeah. um, the one I gave you. <laughs> what you the best of the seekers, yeah. <laughs> is that an L P? I mean a small record. I think that's or... a C D, isn't it? It's uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh it's a CD. It's got about it's got about three CDs in it. Oh, it's like a C D oh, yeah. collection. About... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's got about yeah, 3D pack with practically all their songs on it. 3D pack, yeah, it's like, woo. <laughs> three dimensional, <laughs> three disc pack. Oh, yeah, three disc pack. I don't know what it means. Because it says that Ottawa guy was. Was it like their 50th Victoria. anniversary? Yeah, they what did was, recently. Was that so Golden, golden oh, yeah, threads and silver needles, or something. Silver needles, yeah. That was, there was um, one new. There was one when they had the, was it the twenty fifth anniversary in about nineteen ninety four or nineteen ninety four. The twenty fifth anniversary. I think it was silver threads. Or silver, silver threads and golden needles. Silver threads and golden needles, yeah. That was yeah, I think it was with the, with the yeah. 
a dream in yeah. your pocket or something. They had a, uh, yeah. a new one that they made. And yeah, then, right. And then there was another one I can't remember. Because it. it said okay. that also guy was born the 5th of January, 19, in Victoria. The guitarist Bruce Woodley was born the 25th of July, 1942, in Melbourne. And the Right, yeah. Guitarist Keith Pop was born the 2nd of March in Colombo, Sri Lanka. And so oh, really? <laughs> Judith Durham was born the 3rd of July, 1943. Another resident. Yeah, right. So, That's interesting that one of them was born in Sri Lanka. Yes. Yeah, yeah Keith Pop was born, born there, wasn't he? Yeah, right, okay. I think that song still the friend of golden needles was by by a um artist called dick reynolds and jack reynolds in 56 it says oh yeah oh or the they were um, brothers probably probably oh, yeah, well, they have the same name <laughs> well that was the um he did uh, the Springfield. Uh, which one was it? It was uh, oh, there's Tom Springfield. He did the Carnival is over. It's over, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, it's got here about about I'd like to teach the world to sing. I think for the new seekers, the new yeah. seekers became a major name, and there is. But there was no, really, no replacing the original foursome in 1975. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they had much fame and afterwards from what I. <laughs> oh yeah, when Judith yeah, had when some we, um, I mean, it, when... some medical issue or something. They had a they had a lady singer called Louisa Whistling. Yeah, I think that was when when Judith when Judith was ill, I think, for a while. And they replaced her until she got better, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember what she had, but she had some illness. Oh, maybe that could have been. Ah yeah. Yeah. But she did have she did have um she had a car accident and um Oh, that might have uh, been a it. brain hemorrhage. That brain like, yeah. hemorrhage, yeah. That I had well. the, yeah, I had the LP that was called something like Wonder Lab, and, and it was when she was on her own in the, in the about 1970, I think. When she went right. solo. Yeah, because yeah. I remember... I either got it for a present or something when in 1970. Yeah, right. Because no. I think she came out with that album recently by herself. Oh, did she? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she did. I'm pretty sure I got you that one of them for her birthday or something. <laughs> I think it's in next door somewhere. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. 1943. She'll be what? She'll be what? 78 or something, won't she? If she oh, yeah. Nice. Wow. If she's, if she'd be about 78 now. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> the yeah, oldest one. Be, who is the oldest one? Bruce Wood. He was. He'd be. 80 or 81. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's 80. Oh, okay. Yeah, he'd be getting on a bit, I suppose. Yeah, he'd be about 81. Oh, yeah. I just found a thing here. 1940. Yeah, right. Because it says Judith left to pursue a solo career in in, uh, 1980, sorry, 1980, sorry, 1968, uh, when the group disbanded. The group then reformed periodically in 95 when they were inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame with I'll Never Find Another You, was added to the National Film and Sound Archive of Australia's Sound of Australia registry in 2011. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that says yeah, Woodley and Dave Newton. Australians of the year. I think they yeah. shared it with somebody. Somebody else. You got the one. The whistling, have you? I'm not sure if I've got it. You've got the uh, LP. We did, we did have Louis. it. I don't know if we've still got it, though. Yeah. I've got a, um, I think I've got a music book of the New Seekers as well as the original ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 1976, Australia's of the Year. Uh, Fly northward to the sun. Did they do the sparrow one? Oh yeah, the sparrow sure. song was <laughs> was on that new, that album in on the new album. Yeah, in nineteen seventy five when they when they had Louisa Whistling as their sing lady singer. Singer, yeah. Mm. Yeah, apparently they are the only Australian group to be honoured as Australians of the Year. 1967, wasn't it? Yeah, but apparently they're the only group to be considered Australians of the Year, so no other band or singer that's been had, like, had, that's been called been Australians been. of oh, the right. Year and it's like a group of singers kind yeah. of thing. But they're quite, yeah. I guess that's quite a unique privilege for them. Unique thing, yeah. <laughs> Apparently that song where Carnival is over is based off an old Russian folk song. Oh yeah, I saw oh. that. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Quite a um, quite a dark song I think from memory about like um a girl drowning or something from memory. I think I looked it up a while ago. Okay. I didn't realise that. Yeah. I have to have to read up about. <laughs> I mean, I think I think the Tom Springfield he adapted it, but I think the original song was like a very kind of dark. Oh, I see. Dark. So uh, they didn't actually. Dark the version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. That wasn't their problem. Yeah, it says about um, an episode. Was that, was that um, um, Rush? Oh, yeah, I heard something about the Russian, oh, Russian thing. Yeah, it says um, about the, the, uh, the, the, the daughter Tom, Tom Springfield. I think it was, I presume that was like somewhere related yeah. to Dusty. Yeah, I think he was the brother yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I had a brother, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it says um, yeah. allegedly yeah. killed his. Yeah, it says allegedly yeah. killed uh, <laughs> the, that he uh, allegedly killed the captive, a beautiful princess, by throwing her into the water from a boat. That's kind of what the song's about. Oh. So, so yeah, it's yeah. so basically about throwing a princess into a lake and killing her. That's what the metal, the original song was about. <laughs> oh, is that, is that the carnival is over? Yeah, but that's yeah. obviously oh, like the, is over. that that that's the um, like the Russian Wait, um, song that it's based off of, but it's obviously the Tom. Uh, Springfield obviously changed it a bit to make it a bit less, um, I guess, yeah. Because mm. I think his one is, says Tom Springfield adapted the melody from the Russian folk song. So I think he took the melody from that song and then wrote lyrics about a trip to Brazil where he witnessed the carnival in Rio. So I think it's about the carnival, a, a carnival in Rio, I guess. Oh, the carnival story. Yeah. So I guess it's like that's the carnival is over, kind of like when it's when it the carnival finishes or something, kind of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, the carnival is over. Tom. Yeah. Resetting of an old Russian theme, originally yeah. called Sten Razin. I don't 
arrange. Yeah, I don't know how you pronounce it. <laughs> roll back. Yeah. Something like Sten Sten Ica Razin or something. Yeah. So yeah. So which which, do you think, Woody. which song do you think they're most well known for? I mean, I would say Georgie, oh, yeah. probably my my favourite one, but I don't know. George maybe Bill. like I'll yeah. never find another you or so. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I'll never find a new another you. It was the first one, wasn't it? Their first single, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah. The, a world, so, the world of our own, and then Morning Town Ride, and Someday, One Day, Georgie Girl, American Top, The Carnival 90. is over. I'll never find another you reach number four. The world of our own reach made number nineteen. In fact, the well, biggest apparently... American hit was still ahead of the Georgie Girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they had the film. Yeah, well, I think that song was was written for it or something. That's the movie, isn't it? Did you ever see the movie, Rich? It was on on the other the other day. Oh really? I don't think I've ever seen it. Must be a pretty old last last week, and then maybe about yeah, yeah, about. Alan Bates. 1966. Was it 1966? Oh, yeah. They had, um, what was his name? Alan, Alan Bates. The one, the one, yeah, Alan Bates, the one who's in the bar from the Madden Crowd. Yeah, what's the name? They had uh, Alan Bates. Luffridge, is it? Or? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> it said something about collaboration with Jim Dale because he was one of the one of the carry on chaps, wasn't he? Jim Dale. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And carry on. Lynn Redgrave, Charlotte Rempling, Alan Bates, James Benson, Rachel Kempson, Bill Owen, Denise Coffey. Some of the ones reached, from the movie. Jo- yeah. Georgie girl reached number two in the in the United States and number three in ah, the yeah. UK. <laughs> yeah. Well, it says here that apparently I'll never find another you. A world of heart own, a carnival and o is over. And Georgie girl have all sold like a million copies of the singles. Copies, yeah. Yeah, so they're probably oh, the best. The those are probably their oh, most right. successful one. The, mo- the most well known. Yeah. yeah, and it says they were all written or co-written by Tom Stringfield, and were each awarded a gold disc. So oh. yeah, they're all probably all those are probably their oh, most yeah. well known ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a website called The Seekers Fact Farm. Oh. How is that? Because um, there's also the I'm Australian song, isn't there? That, um, I can't remember which one of them wrote. Is that, is that the, um, is that the national anthem? I think they did. Um, they sing, I am, um, I am an Australian. Australian. Don't they? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. kind of our, our national anthem. Well, obviously there's us, you know, the traditional one, and there's I am Australia. Because of the, of the national anthem we Australian. have, there's Australians all in, let us us rejoice for we are young and free. But then there's um, also, free, yeah. yeah, but there's also that, that, I guess I am Australia is kind of almost like a, mm, a anthem in itself. <laughs> but I remember and Daddy also, Boy talking. The swagger on my shoulder, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> ah, yeah. Danny Boy. <laughs> oh, Daddy Boy was did a live um, 
uh, comedy show at, boy, at Sydney, yeah. and oh, I was meeting the comedian, and he talks about uh, waltzing Matilda and say how, you know, that should be like our national anthem, but obviously the the song doesn't have the most kind of positive or fl- uplifting meaning behind it because it talks <laughs> about some kind of uh, maybe sort of mildly inappropriate things in the song, so it probably wouldn't make for a very good uh, national anthem, <laughs> despite it being a very classic <laughs> song. Who's they do um, Matilda Matilda Jane they did with my swagger on my shoulder, didn't they? Or a swagger. Was it swagger all my yeah, shoulder? Yeah, it was a swagger on my shoulder. Yeah. Like Billy in my hand. I travelled the bush of Australia. Like a farm I'm eating. Yeah, with a, with a swag. Something. Yeah, they had their 25th reunion yeah, celebration in 94. Yeah, and their 50th was in 2013, uh, I think. Yeah. I don't know if you gave me the... Maybe. And the Beatles were. Um, I then mislaid the tape. <laughs> it, had the, it had those two extra songs. Oh, plus okay, yeah. Loads of, plus a lot of their songs. Yeah, right. Apparently, it says one of their con- the the only concert artist to ever draw a crowd of more than two hundred thousand people to a concert in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're a bit and like they... the Beatles were to England? The yeah, Beatles yeah, were to Australia, yeah. Well, I kind of feel that way, yeah. You had like the Beatles, obviously, and the Rolling Stones in the UK, and then the Australian answer to that was a four, four piece folk group. <laughs> yeah. I think they used, to be in, they used to be in Abbey Road studio at the same time as the Beatles. Oh, yeah. Because ah, yeah. they, they spent to... a fair bit of time in the UK. Because I think they kept, they planned to stay for yeah, ten weeks and then they extended it because I think they got a um, yeah right. I think they got some record company to uh, sponsor them or something. So uh, apparently they were the first Australian group ever to reach number one in the UK with a debut record, which was "I'll Never Find Another You," and it says not even the Rolling Stones or the Beatles yeah. achieved that. So they're pretty unique, I guess, in that sense. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but oh, also, it reads, yeah. It reads number four. Apparently, they're also the first wow. Australian group to reach number one in the US and the UK. And it says, like, not even, like, the Easy Beats or uh, In Excess or ACDC or the Little River Band achieve that kind of success. So. Which are all yeah, like they had a Australian hit in, like, bands. The UK, America, and Australia, didn't they? Yeah, they were them. US, the UK, yeah. Yeah. The first uh, yeah, that to you, reach number one of the charts yeah, were the first three singles as well, apparently, which even Michael Jackson or Madonna did achieve. So they're pretty, uh, pretty. Um, oh, okay. We've got a lot, a lot of records here that are like no other artist has been done before, which is pretty, uh, pretty uh, cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it was that number one, wasn't it? Yeah, it says the only. Yeah, yeah. It says the only surviving chart topping band from the sixties anywhere in the world with the original founding members. And still performing a recording half a century later. <laughs> later, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, Rick, I think I cut you off before what you said. <laughs> oh, about Apparently, me. was it about <laughs> me getting to number one? Oh, the, the one about getting to about number me. one, yeah. 
Yeah, they also honoured in the, their own postage stamp in 2012 as Australian legends. Wow. So they had their own series of uh, stamps. I didn't realise that. Yeah, in 2012. Yeah. Oh, all right. Apparently the Seekers each awarded with the, office, the Officers of the Order of Australia in the Queen's Birthday Honours in 2014. Oh, wow. I yeah. that would have been the, been the 50th anniversary since I started. Something like that, yeah. yeah. It's interesting that bands quite often get back together sort of later on in life, don't they? Yeah. But well, I, I think that they... Like for <laughs> celebration or something. Yeah, I think they're like the only ones that have all managed to like stay alive because most bands that have done that have lost a member <laughs> along the way or something and they've managed lost to be... Them, yes. they've, they've managed all yeah. to not pass away, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Apparently, it says an Australian historian, Ian McFerrin, described their style of music as concentrated on a bright, up tempo sound. Although they were too pop to be considered strictly folk, and too folk to be rock. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they used to say. <laughs> that's yeah, what they a cross say. between folk and pop, really. Yeah. Well, I think they're definitely more folk based because if you, I feel like a lot of the instruments they yeah, use are kind of like banjos and stuff are very kind of mellow sounding and yeah. do, like the do, 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 do yeah, <laughs> as opposed to sort of what you'd expect, I guess, from pop artists of the time or something. Mm. Yeah. A debut single with tradition. Ah, oh, okay. Apparently, that that debut single was Waltzing Matilda in nineteen. Sorry, eighteen. Wait, the debut was a tradition. Ah, oh, yeah. So oh, their yeah. first single was Waltzing Matilda. Back. They did a cover of. I think that was when that was when the song was made. I think, but then they did a cover of it. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It so was, was quite, just a, some a of them were quite old they songs, weren't they, like, Waltzing Matilda? Yeah. Well, I think there's quite yeah. a few of this, but, uh, covers of uh, well-known songs like Carnival is Over, yeah, Waltzing Matilda, uh, Silver Friends and Golden Needles, that kind of thing. Yeah, probably. Mm. Yeah, all the cl all the classic whiskey folk whiskey songs. Sure. Yeah. The, 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 era. the wreck of the old ninety-seven. Oh, that other one. Oh yeah. Because there's that song. I think it's I can't the remember Wolf the artist what, that and talks and about um, talks about like a ship that sunk. Forget the guy's name, the wreck of the uh, Edmunds Fitzgerald, I think. Or... I don't know if they ever did a cover of that, but I remember that. So when you said the old, the old 27 or 97 or something. <laughs> I thought that was a, I thought that was a train, wasn't it? The old 97. I was like, it a might have been, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Could have been. Yeah. Maybe it was a, Maybe it was a boat. Maybe it was a ship. Yeah. I remember, um, I think I for, <laughs> yeah, I think for the cover for the Waltzing Matilda um, single they did, um, what's his name? Uh, we played, were uh, what, Ponga? No, is was... that the one roving, roving at the Seekers or something? Is that, I don't know. Oh, the road no. to road to somewhere. Is that Gundagai. road with the sea? Gundagai. 
Is that? I think yeah, that's. Is that the name of that al- album? That's the name of a song. Yeah. A song. I but, <laughs> but yeah, apparently when they did the the cover for the Waltzing Matilda, the poor poor yes. Potker was not allowed to be on the cover of the album because he worked for the ABC. I think at the time, and for some reason, they didn't want him on there, so. They got some guy to like fill in for him. <laughs> so if you, you if you have a look at that photo, you you won't see him on there for some, which I thought was kind of a fun random little fact. Because yeah. I think it says, yeah, as a radio producer, he was barred from being involved in a commercial enterprise, aka the 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 single like the music. But then I think I presume yeah, afterwards he ended up exactly. leaving, and then then obviously became part of the band. And obviously you see him on a lot more of the the um, the covers after that. Album covers, yeah. Yeah. So, did you have any other favourites, Rick? <laughs> um, well, the Seekers. Over the yeah. Other oh, Seekers one. Uh, uh, those are like we probably lot, mentioned. Like we someday. probably mentioned most of them, haven't we? Probably. Yeah. Someday, it was one day. South Australia. Or the Rattler, or. Um, the leaving of Liverpool or Liverpool, oh, leaving of Liverpool, yeah. Or yeah. the swaggle on my shoulder and Louis, Louisiana man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Gypsy Rover, that's the one that's oh, an that old, was a, yeah. old that's, that's an old song as well, I think. The Gypsy yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> An island of dream, wasn't there? Oh yeah, there's that, island of dreams. Is that oh, that's oh, the one that was originally yeah. by um, Kenny Kenny Rogers and uh, Dolly Parton, wasn't it? Or is that a different one? But it's like islands in the stream. Yeah, that, that is what we are. No one in between. Do, 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 do. Is that the one, or is that no, a different one? Different. I think that's yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Myra and Myra. And, and Myra, Myra, many boats in the harbour. <laughs> and this land is your land. And oh, yeah, this land is your land. land. This land is my land. This is my land. From California. <laughs> I think his friends. His friends, when uh, Jerry finds his identical hand twin, and he's like, This hand is my hand, this hand is your hand. Oh, wait, that's my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this land is made for you and me. Uh, yeah. Me and you, or you and me. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Apparently they also oh, hold the record for uh, Australian record. television. Uh, yeah, they probably would be, yeah, I reckon. I was just going to say that when they had their yeah. television special, apparently they had a 67 rating, which is one of the highest of record holders in Australian television, which was in 97 when they did the, the Seekers down under. It seems like oh, okay. you know, they got a lot of lot of uh, records to their name. <laughs> name, yes. Yeah. With Simon and Garfunkel. And what about Simon and Garfunkel? And the, the 59th Bridge song was by Simon, oh, okay. Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, yeah. Simon and yeah. Did they do a cover and, of that? Another one, there was, there was another one they sang too. Uh, 
Oh yeah, Clarity was the one by Simon and Garfunkel as well. Feeling no. greedy. <laughs> Yeah, apparently there's, there's there's quite a few of them Feeling songs good. here I found that they've done covers of. <laughs> apparently, Emerald City's from an uh, orchestra. Of a, is originally from an orchestra. Well, it says unknown, oh, but they've oh. obviously like an orchestra did one. Apparently, uh, Eddie Stone yeah. Light is a cover. Don't think twice. It's all right. This bone's gonna rise again. Benny boy, common fields, cloudy, chilly winds. Children go where the sands are there. California dreaming, blowing in the wind, away in a major, all over the world. All my trials, Allentown jail, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, bridge song, five hundred oh, yeah. miles, four strong winds. Goodbye again. Have yourself a merry Christmas. Hello, Mary Lou. I'm Australian. You go away. I have to say, I, I love you in the song Islands of Dreams, which was apparently by the Springfields originally. Jingle Bells, just a closer walk with me. Katie Klein, Kabaya, Lemon Tree, which was by someone called Silvio Caldas and Gidin Ho, Will Hollington, Dolly Joe, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, little Drummer Boy, <laughs> Louisiana Man, Mary Has a Baby, Morning Down Ride, Line Liners, Nobody Knows The Trouble I've Seen. Um, the Trouble I've Seen. Oh, Come All You Faithful, What's the Royal David City on the other side? Open up them pearly gates, please come to Boston. Red rubber balls, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, Santa's coming to town, Silent Night, Cinnamon, South Australia, which says unknown, Study War No More, Sweet Surrender, The Carnival Is Over, The Esky, I forget, Eriski, Eriske, Love Lit, Lilt, I think it is. The First Noel, Jersey Rover, which oh, yeah. was by okay, really Lynch and the Orchestra. The last thing on my mind, the leaving of Liverpool, which was by someone called Ewan Cole and A. L. Lloyd. The light from the lighthouse. There is no lights on a Christmas tree. The times they're changing. On oh, the wreck of the old ninety-seven. Here we go. Uh, Charles Lewis Stein and Henry yeah, really. Whitaker, or Witter. Uh, think I'm almost done. There's a few more. <laughs> The little what light of mine, on oh, this little <laughs> light of mine, this train, turn, 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 well, well, well. We should not be moved. What have they done to the rain when a child is born? When will the good apple fall? Whiskey in the jar, wild rover, yesterday, you can tell the world. <laughs> Whew, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yes, it's like whiskey, whiskey in the jar, you know. Um, yeah, it's, uh, tune as well, so. it's got Lena, Lena Bornfish. I don't know if that's the original last, but to, yeah. So, so she's a singer from uh, Adir Adirondack Park, who, with a huge repertoire of folk songs. Most of them learned from her family. She was born in 1873 and died in 1945. Apparently. Yeah, Gil uh, says Gil Gilgara Mountain, aka Whiskey in the Jar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they I think they um they sang a few songs with kids as well. I don't know if that was just Judith Durham on her own or Ah yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the, 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 the world of our own, or this one world or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got the whole world in your hands. As I, said, I think that was, that was what I mentioned, I can't remember. That's the whole world. I don't know. Does it, does it say whether it's a shipwreck or a train? I don't know, it just says... I don't know. Might be able to find out. Um, just a the ship that never returned. Yeah. In... Oh, it oh, said who died in the wreck or something. 
in 97. Oh, it's that American rail disaster. Yeah, you were right. Involved oh, in the yeah, Southern Rail Mail Show. Yeah. Apparently it's officially known as the yeah. Fast Mail while en route from Mon Montreux, Virginia Man, to Pensa, oh, North California in September 27, 1903 was when it happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The 11... 11 men who died, nine were immediately killed or something. It so, says it was due to excessive speed and the attempt to maintain schedule, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure there's a reason oh. that the Titanic <laughs> crashed into the iceberg because of that, because <laughs> they were trying to get there quickly because yeah. they had limited amounts of fuel. That, yeah. So that so the um, captain just like said yeah. it's zooming off. And they, you know, they kind of came too close and didn't move quick enough, and bam! Yeah, I was yeah, watching a, yeah. I was watching a program with Dan the other night where they discovered some new evidence about what caused the um, the Titanic to to uh, right. sink, and apparently one of the the um, thing, like one of the metal pieces that holds the heat in, it um, got exposed to something and warped and then all the water came because so it was supposed to it's supposed to stop when yeah, the water yeah. comes in it's supposed to trap it but because it had been damaged yeah. from one of the from one of the heaters that overflowed or well, just like fired up too much and they couldn't cool it down and the, all the water burst through and obviously flooded the whole ship but if it hadn't been for that being yeah. damaged they might yeah. have survived but unfortunately they didn't Bit of fun yeah, history yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they had the, they had the citizenship. And didn't they which, forget. Well, the was citizenship. Called, they had the citizenship of it. Ah, oh, yeah. The citizenship was that the Oh, the Titanic. Yeah. I forget what that one was called. Yeah. Did did that one crash yeah, as well? I think. The one, but. I, I'm not sure whether they've done something to um, to prevent it somehow, somehow yeah. to prevent it leaking. I think, but yeah, I don't know. Says that the Brit Britannica is the youngest well, of the three. Apparently, there's three of them. Yeah. Britannica, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what the other one was called, but that was the most Olympic, I think, was the other one. The Olympic Titanic and Britannia, I think they were, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like we're getting off topic now, anyway. <laughs> yeah, Talking we about are. about history <laughs> instead of thinking. I mean, I don't know if there's any other, any oh, other yeah. thing you want to talk about or we can we can call it because we've been talking for almost an hour now so yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah cool watching well the before it might be okay yeah oh, yeah the weather yeah is, is yeah. it nice over there in really the uk <laughs> i'll be saying be saying what have nice they done to the rain there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's that good. was one, wasn't it? What have you done with the rain? Yeah. What What have you done with the rain? The rain. Oh, what have you done to that, the rain? That was yeah, one apparently. of the seekers one. Look, right, look okay. What have they done to the rain? Is it on here? Yeah. I don't know if it's on here. No. Oh yeah. They can't well, I guess, uh, yeah. Oh, don't worry too much. Uh, so yeah, I guess I'll, before yeah. we go, I'll ask you what. Uh, so don't worry if you can't think of anything. But favorite song, artist, album, and genre. <laughs> My favorite just, song. It, My if you can't think. Oh, I'll let Rick go. <laughs> I'll let you go. <laughs> probably one of the other songs I like. Uh, oh yeah. Um, probably the um, 
What what's the one where they um The Bubble song? Waterloo. Does your mother know that you're at? Or... Oh Waterloo, yeah. That's the one they did for Europe, if you know. Uh, does your mother know yeah, that's quite Especially the in the, in the, the movie Euro with, uh, the I forget the actress who played that character, but she played the part very well. No, she's the one who plays Leonard's mum in uh, Big Bang Theory. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then oh, she was back. oh, my last summer, was it? Oh, uh, yeah, and I can still recall. Yeah, well. That is mother. Oh my yeah, Len, you know, oh, yeah. Lena's Len, mother in Big Bang Theory, she's the one who plays yeah. the friend. Yeah. What a bad oh, favourite yeah. artist, then. <laughs> I, presume sneakers would be, I presume Sneakers yeah. is going to be the, the answer, is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably the Sneakers. Yeah. Or the Herman's Hermits, or uh, Beach like Boys, or whatever. <laughs> who was it? Who, who ah, was yeah. the lady in red? Oh, the Beach Boys. Uh, I'd have to have a look right, at that. Is that, is that, is that right, your, the, 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 your favourite song? Yeah. <laughs> it is a pretty good song. Very kind of mild. Uh, Chris Bird was the uh, Private Life of Bill oh, and Sue. Was that's extra, right. Christa Berg was the guy who did Lady in Red. But Rick's one. Red. You'll have to uh, have to do another podcast episode talk about like Amber and Beach Boys and stuff. <laughs> Some oh, yeah. down the yeah. track. <laughs> or, about, or about the Beatles or about... Yeah, or it could about, be the Beatles. I don't know. I I'm, I'm up for whatever. Much about the Herman, Herman. I mean, Cor um, my mate Corey might so want to do folk, one about the Beatles, so we'll see. Yeah, we could do it. We could. Well, I was thinking oh, yeah, of doing an episode yeah. about like traditional folk music, so we could talk about that as well, like uh, whiskey in the jar and uh, oh, foggy, yeah. foggy do yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 Corey yeah. likes the Beatles, but he also this likes like a lot. Huh? Lots he of the like folk. the Beatles, does he? Probably? Yeah, he's a, he's a big Beatles fan. He yeah. He's got like all the albums and stuff. I might, I might even they... consider asking my friend uh -huh. Rahul because I know he's a big Beatles fan, but yeah. <laughs> we'll see how we go. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for joining me oh. and uh, having yeah. a chat. <laughs> Hope you yeah, had fun. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you, Rahul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good to see you from across the other yeah. side of the road. Cool. Yeah. See